Welcome to beautiful Old Sturbridge Village in Sturbridge, Massachusetts, where we're going to take a tour on this October day. We're going to start at the Meeting House and then proceed to what is, for many people, their favorite spot, the Fitch House, a typical house in rural New England in the 1830s. As we enter the house, we come into the main area where we naturally see a fireplace. And we are now going to proceed through that area into one of the bedrooms, which is a multi-purpose room, and then into a second bedroom. We then will exit the bedroom and move into the front sitting room, where on the day we happen to be visiting, we have a reenactment of a funeral. So you will see a coffin with a mannequin inside, as well as the clothing that this mannequin will be draped in for the funeral to be held in the afternoon. In the kitchen, we are preparing meals for the guests that will be arriving to attend the funeral. We will be exiting the kitchen and taking a quick peek at two gardens, starting with the herb garden and then looking at the ornamental children's garden. We'll take a quick peek inside the barn and then move over to a shed alongside of it where we have our privy. After the Fitch House, we'll stop at the Thompson Bank, which was brought to Sturbridge Village from Thompson, Connecticut. We'll look inside and see where transactions occurred. And in the rear of the bank, we will find the vault. We'll then move over to the printing office, an essential part of life in the 1830s. The printing office consists of three rooms, starting with the room where type was set, called the composing room. And here we'll see some of the equipment that was used, including the galley and the chase. As we proceed through the typesetting room, we next come to the press room, and then we'll stop at the bindery, where books were produced and sold. We'll move along outside to the barn area, where cider was made, which in this case was hard cider, a very popular beverage back in the 1830s. There are several small museums, and we'll stop at the glass house, to look at some of the functional glass as well as some of the decorative glass that was used during this time period. It's an extensive museum with beautiful displays. And another museum that will stop out right afterwards is the Early Lighting Museum that traces different types of lighting that was used during this time period. That is basically arranged in chronological order. We see lighting that was used in homes, as well as lighting used for industrial or commercial purposes. As we exit the lighting area, we'll just stop very briefly at what is the beehive and then exit right through the rear door of the beer beehive to take a look at the herb garden. We'll then backtrack out of the herb garden 
to the most elegant home in Old Sturbridge Village, which is the townhouse that was owned by Samuel Town Sr. and then by Samuel Town Jr.'s family. We'll walk through the garden, take a look here at the side of the house, walk along the brick path, which allows us to enter the house from the rear. Walking up this brick path. And the first room we're going to stop at is the East Parlor, which was used for multiple purposes. And then we'll proceed next to the South Parlor, the sunniest room in the house, where we're going to see a piano and a tea set that was used by the children. And then walk across the hallway to the North Parlor that was used for dining. And we'll see the table set for dinner. And some of the cupboards where dishes were stored. We'll next proceed upstairs and stop in the, what was called the sitting bedroom. Again, another room used for multiple purposes. As we proceed to the front on the second floor, we come to a very large room, the ballroom, that was used also for multiple purposes, including meetings, and later also included sleeping quarters. Notice the beautiful decorations on the walls. And as we leave the ballroom, we're going to pass through a very small bedroom. And as we move through this bedroom, we are going to descend a staircase that will bring us back to the first floor to the kitchen area, used for food preparation and for other household chores. There's a narrow staircase down into the cellar where we see items that we use to produce cheese and butter. And the same family was very prosperous in business and in farming, and we're going to take a look at their barn. And from there, we're going to move back into the center village and each time we visit we can always find the stagecoach that traverses around the center village. We're next going to stop at the tin shop, a very important place at this time period in the 1830s where we have a costume interpreter and we'll take a look at some of the items that have been made here in this tin shop which today is a working facility. We'll continue along the village center and stop at a third house at the parsonage used by the minister. We'll move into his study and then go across the way into the living room area. Where again we are greeted by a costume interpreter. We now proceed to the rear of the house where we come to the kitchen. Again, where food preparation can be occurring on any given day when you visit Old Sturbridge Village. And we're going to walk up a staircase into the garret, which was used for multiple purposes, including storing food items and drying herbs and in a small corner, we see where children slept in an attic-like setting. There's a bedroom right alongside. And across from that bedroom, we come to a guest room used by traveling ministers.
We're now going to exit the minister's home and make a very short stop at the lawyer's office. And from there, we're going to proceed to what is for many people their favorite spot in the village, the Asher Knight store that sold items, obviously, to the local people. We see textiles were sold there, dishes for the home, and again, we have a costume interpreter telling us about life at that time period in the 1830s in rural New England. So we take a look at some of the well-stocked shelves. And in addition to coming here for items needed in the homes, the people of that time period would also stop at the general store to pick up newspapers. At the rear of the general store is a storage area. As we walk through the storage area, we're going to leave the general store and head back past the graveyard and end our tour where we began at the meeting house. And thank you for coming along on this tour at Old Sturbridge Village on a beautiful fall day in New England.